Now, welcome back. So we want to talk about the USPGA last night, which gripped everybody who was able to see it anyway. Brooks Kepka shot a final round 66, finished up on 16 under to win the USPGA. His third major in 14 months. Remarkable stuff from the 28-year-old. And uh, in some respects, Tiger Woods won as well. It was uh, just phenomenal for a time. He ended up with uh, final round 64, amazingly his lowest ever round at a major on a Sunday, 14 under par. Outright second place, Adam Scott, who was Kepka's playing partner, finished up on 13 under, and Shane Lowry, as we know, finished in the end a bit down the field, tied for 12th on 8 under. We'll talk about him in a moment. Paul McGinley is on the line. Evening, Paul. Hi, evening, Joe. Uh, dramatic stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was, uh, I mean, the return of Tiger. Um, you know, he's been making noises, all right, around the game in the last, uh, what, nine months, ten months since he's come back, but uh, this was... Uh, this was a very loud noise that he made, and it certainly was a Tiger charge on Sunday. Yeah, I don't want to fall into that trap of talking about Tiger first when there's another champion. You, you know, you feel sorry for uh, the other guy, whoever that other guy is, when it's up against Tiger like this. So Brooks Kepka, uh, like, I, I guess this is part of the question. He's a touch overlooked and underappreciated and maybe has a slight chip on his shoulder about it, understandably. Like, he was overlooked for his chosen university, Florida, he wanted to go to when he was coming out of uh, high school. He was overlooked for the Walker Cup team. He ended up on the Challenge Tour where he did very impressive things and then the European Tour and has sort of emerged fully formed now on the PGA Tour. Three of his four PGA Tour wins have been majors. Uh, I know you really, really rate this guy. From memory at the Sky Zone, uh, oh, the Sky Zone, how we missed it. But on the, uh, at the Sky <laughs> Zone at the uh, British Open, I think from memory someone asked you during the summer who you would take from the US Ryder Cup team if you could take anyone. I think you said Kepka. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, he's been there. Uh, we, 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 <laughs> we'd like to hijack him as European. He's, uh, if you're around uh, the players' lounges and stuff, uh, even at the major championships, you know, he hangs around with the European players a lot. He sees himself as friends with very much with the European guys. He played a lot on the European tour. He's very familiar with not just the players, the caddies as well, and the people around it. And I think that background of, you know, it didn't all fall into place from coming out of college. Um, he struggled. He didn't get his card in the PGA Tour, came over to Europe, uh, went to the Challenge Tour, got his card through that, and, and spent a few years in Europe and, and, and kind of got his, his grounding in professional golf uh, in that way, traveling, going to different countries, going to Asia, going to Australia, South Africa. And, and I think all of those things have really stood to him in terms of his golf apprenticeship. Um, and now we have culminating in probably the hottest player in the world at the moment, you'd have to say, in, in uh, having won two majors this year. Describe his game for people, Paul. <laughs> well, I mean, it's all obviously based around power. I mean, it's, uh, he, uh, he, he smashes the ball. End of story. You know, like most of the top players nowadays, he, uh, he overpowers the golf course. That's his, uh, his one way of playing. Um, you know, you put him on Carnoustie when you had to duck and dive and a little bit and play short of bunkers and kind of move the ball left to right. And, and he, well, it's unfair to say he was all at sea, but it, it, it didn't play into his domain. But when you give, get a big, long, uh, wet, soft golf course like he did last week, he, he comes to the fore. Having said that, um, his win in the U.S. Open is a lot to be admired there because that was a tough test of golf. It was a real test of, of mental strength um, and the ability to forget, which is often talked about in, in terms of resilience in the game of golf. And he has that. You look at all his interviews. I watched all the interviews very closely every night because that, that U.S. Open more than any um, was about attitude. And, and never once did he complain, never once did he you know, go on about the golf course or the setup. It was like, you know, it is what it is. Same for everybody. Okay, you might come across as, you know, not the smartest, smartest guy, but I think, I think intellectually, uh, from a golf point of view, he, he's very smart and he gets it and he gets what he has to do. He does have finesse around the greens as well and he can hold a putt when he needs to. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Excellent stroke. I know he does a lot of work in the short game with, uh, with Pete Cowan, who's been uh, who's very influential in the short game, particularly when he played over here in Europe. Um, and, uh, you know, Pete is highly regarded. Um, probably a lot of the players would say, not all of them, but a lot of them would say that Pete's a better short game coach than he is a long, -term, long game coach. And, and some of the top players in America, uh, Brooks included, uh, go to see him for their short game only. Yeah, so he's finished in the top 25 now in his previous seven majors, uh, previous to the 2017 uh, US Open. He's had four top 10 fi finishes in majors since uh, 2014. If you include his wins, he's eight top 10s in majors. And as I mentioned, three of his four wins have been majors. He was talking last night in his press conference and he just said he loves them. Um, he, t you know, he talked about how he feels he has more patience at these kind of tournaments than regular PGA Tour events. He's got his routine down, the chef comes, they have the house seems to really enjoy it, feels instantly at home at it. And that ties in with your point about mental strength. Like, 
you never felt, uh, I mean, well, you, you, um, you give your take, but uh, you never overly felt at Shinnecock at the US Open back in June that he was going to relinquish the lead or wobble badly. And even with Tiger doing miraculous things last night, you never fully felt that Kepka was going to give it to him. Like mentally, this guy's got something really special. Yeah, I mean, let's just talk about the mental aspect of the game uh, a little bit, Joe, because a lot of people have a, um, a misunderstanding of, of what the mental game in golf is. And, and to be quite honest, it's, it's, uh, it, being in the zone is, is about simplicity. It's about not much going on in your head, about reacting to the target, about um, not over-intellectualizing what you're doing or how you're doing it. You're just seeing it, you're doing it, you're going around almost in a daze. And that can come across as, yo, know, he's not very bright or he's quite dim, and something DJ is accused of, Dustin Johnson's accused of, mm. and, um, and, and Brooks is in that way too. And, and, and that's been in the zone. That's, that's what all the guys are trying to get into. And, and, and the difficulty is, particularly for, for somebody who's naturally inquisitive, like the Chambeau, for example, or Paulie Carrington is another example, um, you know, it's, very, it's much more difficult for those guys to get in the zone. And, and that's what makes it... Uh, that's what makes it so um, fabulous when they do win a tournament is that they talk about the simplicity of what they did and not they didn't win the game with their head or they didn't win the game with over-intellectualizing what they were doing. They just went out and got in the zone and kept things as simple as possible and did it. And, and, and that's a very much a natural state of mind, certainly as Dustin Johnson seems to get into a lot. And, mm. um, and I think uh, Brooks Kepke is the same way. And, and that's really what it is all about. It's not being over-intelligent. It's actually being quite the opposite where you're just reacting to the target and, and kind of going along in, in somewhat of a daze. Yeah, for people who didn't see it last night, he bogeyed four and five, and that would be a very human moment if you reacted to that under the pressure, the roars. They all talked about hearing the Tiger roars all day, but instead he regrouped, he birdied seven, eight, and nine. Just one last point on Kepke, and I'll ask you the question after we play this audio. In his post-round press conference last night, this is kind of an interesting point. This guy's really, really hungry. So, you know, he won his US Open last year and then he missed the Masters this year with his wrist injury, which it turns out was career-threatening. And that's given him a new perspective on his game. And, and he, he talked about discipline um, a, a lot in his press conference last night. Here's just a brief snippet. So, you know, he was asked how he's managed this level of performance and success after that injury in the early part of the season. I think sitting on the couch made me really appreciate... Um, how much I actually love love this game and love competition. Um, when you're out of competition, I I don't want to say I was depressed, but I was definitely down. Um, and to finally have the chance to come back and play, I can't tell you how excited I was. I mean, I was I couldn't wait to get off the couch, couldn't wait to get up in the morning. Um, and some of those days, um, I mean, I, I don't think I moved off the couch at all. Uh, you know, I. I got fat, gained about 15, 20 pounds. Um, that's never fun. And I just kept telling myself, you know, I just kind of talk to myself and be like, all right, one day at a time, just keep going, keep going. You're getting closer and closer. And then finally to get the okay from the doctors, I've never been more focused, more driven, uh, more excited to play um, and really embracing what's around me. I feel like I've done a very good job of that when I've come back and I just need to keep that up um, because obviously it's working. Yeah, it sure is. So uh, the question then, on the last one on Kepka, if we, if we talk about the post-Tiger generation, and I appreciate Tiger's come back into the mix now, but the post-generation, uh, the generation after Tiger, uh, Rory is maybe the elder statesman with his, with his four majors. And you've got, you know, Dustin Johnson still stuck on one Paul. You've got Jason Day still stuck on one. Justin Rose, Ricky Fowler still to get off the mark. These things are incredibly difficult to win. Uh, this guy's parachuted in with three. Could he be the late bolter in this generation to end up with the most majors? Well, I mean, at this moment in time, he's in the sweet spot, Joe. I mean, he's, he's, he's in the sweet spot that Rory has been in in the past, that Dustin Johnson has been in, where the game is simple, life is simple. He doesn't have a lot of responsibilities outside playing golf. Golf is all that he does, and he just goes and he does it. He's not interested in business. He doesn't have a family. He's enjoying life. He's hanging out with his friends, um, and that's what he's doing, and he's playing golf, and, and, and it's young. He's young. It's, the game is fresh. 
There's no expectation really on his shoulders, and, and he's, in a, he's in a wonderful stage. That's not always going to happen. That, it's going to increase now. There's going to be more expectation on him when he goes to tournaments. As he moves on into life, life's going to get in the way in terms of, you know, he's sure he's maybe one day going to settle down. He's a long-time girlfriend. If he's going to settle down, maybe have kids, maybe business interests come. You know, Will, where he's at at the moment, that interview he just gave now, that's the sweet spot. You know, it would be interesting to hear his interview in five years' time. Does he still see the game in the same way? Does he still have the freshness about competition? Does he still have the freshness and love for the game that he did then? Because the chances are probably not, because not many of the guys do. Um, uh, and at this moment in time, he's in the sweet spot. So uh, I think it's too early to say. Um, he certainly has all, all the potential, but you could say that about a number of guys. The guys that you mentioned there, they all have the same potential. Um, and so much of it is going to come down to that hunger. And is that, how long is that hunger going to last for? And how, is, how, is that, how long is that intention of, of, of being selfish and being it all about you, how long is that going to last for before other things come in and maybe contaminate that mindset? Um, and, you know, if you want to be ruthless about, about serial winners, um, that's the way they are. They, mm. That's the way they see it. It's about being ruthless and about, about being very selfish in terms of their own careers. Which brings us on to Tiger Woods. Um, I mean, he managed it for so long and he would have been within his rights, I think, in the last few years to say, do you know what, I've had a great run, I'm done. So final round 64 is lowest ever in a, in a final round of a major, which was extraordinary. He didn't hit a fairway till the 10th. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 saw, I saw it all right. I was watching it on, on my iPad and uh, I watched it. Um, his iron play was superb. I mean, yeah. absolutely fantastic. Um, I think the golf course... Uh, was not the most challenging, but it was the same for everybody. Um, his putting looked fabulous. It was the first time. What we've seen a lot from Tiger this, this year so far is there was always something missing. Um, this week, um, it was probably his, his, uh, his driving. Not, not so much his driver, but he seemed to miss a lot of fairways with three woods and irons. Um, when he hit a few drivers in the back mind area and, and he got in the middle of competition, he started to stripe it down the middle of the fairway. And, and that showed a real competitive edge, something that we really haven't seen when he's been in contention um, uh, so far tournaments this year. So if you look at his path and, and what his, his graph of his performances, mm. you know, he got in contention very early in the year when Paul Casey won. And he played the last hole uh, one shot behind like he was trying to protect second place. He hit an iron off the tee, he hit 195 yards in odd to a pin position that was impossible. Uh, I think Patrick Reed went with a wedge a couple of groups earlier, and he said, oh, God, that's not like Tiger. That's, that's not like the competitive Tiger we know about. But this time, this was different. This was a guy who got the bit between his teeth. He saw where the leader was mm. and kept stepping it up. Kept, yeah, he made the odd mistake, but he kept coming back making birdies um, and kept grinding it out. So this was, uh, this, was the, this was the closest we've seen to the old Tiger. You've seen it all, and you've, you've, you've done a lot of things in the game as well. Uh, but that stretch where 12 through to 15, where he went birdie, birdie, the bogey on 14, and then came back on 15, 164 yards, that nine iron, when that landed on the green, <laughs> I mean, like, for, for, a, for an entire generation, they've never had that moment. And, like, the crowd couldn't... Con like, the crowd, crowd lost its mind. It was, it was absolutely phenomenal. Like, it, he does just bring something to golf that very, very few, pretty much no one can bring. He does. He does. He has a charisma. Listen, we all know about that. We've all seen it. Um, but the other thing about it going on is everybody loves a comeback, too. You know, Hollywood is built on comebacks, and everybody loves the old story of, you know, the Rocky story of the guy coming back from being on the canvas and being down and out and out. And, and that's pretty much where Tiger was. So there's that emotional aspect to it that everybody can relate to. You know, we've all had ups and downs in our lives, and we can all relate to coming back from, from the places that we know, you know, that he's been in terms of, um, you know, everything was going wrong in his life. He was having a uh, a really bad time off the golf course as well as on it with his injuries and, and to see him coming back um, of course everybody can, can feel that sense of emotion because we've all had ups and downs in life How does his swing look? Like you know the, the issues off the tee in particular? Well to me it looks, it looks fabulous I mean, I mean it's never looked anything that hasn't been fabulous to me I mean I'm not an expert in terms of what the golf swing is but I like the flow of it I think he just gets a little bit quick I still think there's a bit of fear in there but he's always played with a bit of fear in this game and, and the fear is not it's, it's not it's, it's, um, it's not succumbing to fear is the, is the king and, and, and being able to being resilient and coming back from a mistake um, and being able to grind out like a par on 17 yeah. when you know he, he obviously had that fear of don't hit it in the water don't hit it in the water and what does he do he hits it in the water but he still ground out a par um, and you know, that's golf, you know, I mean, 
one of the big things we talk about, we talk about that, uh, you know, we talked earlier about the, the mindset that golfers have and that ability to forget, that, that, to have that goldfish kind of mind where by the time you go around the other side of the bowl, you've forgotten what happened the first time you were around. That's absolutely priceless when it comes to the mindset of a golfer. Mm. Um, and, and, and to be able to forget about one shot and move on to the next one. That's what all the greats have talked about. Um, that's what all the greats have talked about when they're in the zone, when they're in the mindset um, of, of winning major championships. And, and Tiger knows how that feels and it's about reconnecting with those feelings and he showed a lot of it um, I have to say yesterday that's he surprised me how, how good he was yesterday that, that really was a step up because when he got in contention in the open championship you know he made mistakes straight away yeah. the minute he got the lead he made mistakes and he got out, out of contention it was like oh this I'm, I'm uncomfortable here but this time he didn't mm. this time he kept trying to hunt down Kepka yeah, which suggests maybe the resilience uh, is growing is becoming, and he's becoming accustomed to it again and do you hold out pretty big hopes now that Come 2019, he's, he's going to be there or thereabouts and actually can win a major again. I, I think there's no doubt about that now. I think we've seen enough evidence now. And as, as I say, it's been a graph. It's been an upward graph from that first time in contention. Um, first of all, coming back out in Bahamas last year with a ball speed of over 180 mile an hour, which you need to have really to contend at the top level yeah. week after week. He had that. Wow, that was a surprise to everybody. Then he goes out and, and he performs well in, uh, in that tournament we talked about in Valspar, I think it was, where Casey won. And then, then he started having performances. And okay, it wasn't all coming together, but there was evidence there. Then he lost his putting. Then he got his putting back then he started to perform at the uh, at the open championship and, and, and now he's performed to another level again at the, so there's no doubt that mm. uh, you would have to think that yes he he's got a great chance of winning certainly another major championship and, and certainly another tournament and the the interesting thing um to 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 look at is um you know that resilience that that's the thing that that's the thing that really, um, really impressed me. That, that, that was the old Tiger. Yeah. That was making a mistake and getting on with the next shot. Because he's never really been a great driver of the golf ball. He's always made mistakes. Mm. And uh, he seemed to have that, that bit between his teeth from a competitive edge. Yeah. Uh, and that's what, that's what was most impressive. Would but you, the, the thing yeah. to remember as well, though, too, it's a different environment. It's a different world than it was 10 years ago when he was dominating the game. You know, you've got arguably three players at the moment in, in Brooks Kepka, Dustin Johnson, and Justin Thomas, who have got huge confidence, all three of them, can play the game um, as powerful and if not more powerful than Tiger can. Now, when Tiger was at his best, he had another gear. He had another gear that the other guys couldn't go to, and he knew that. This is a different challenge for Tiger because he's got, he's got three or four guys ahead of him that he knows have got a different gear than he can go to. Mm. So he's got a box clever. He's got to find a different way of competing against them, um, and it's going to be interesting to see how he's going to go about that. Clock coming against us now, so two, two uh, last quick ones. Uh, Shane Larry finished 12th, and so he's up to 139 on the FedEx, needs to get to 125. He's got uh, the Wyndham Championship now, needs to move up another 14 places, so needs another really good week, but certainly his form has uh, started trending in the right direction. From, uh, from the outside, I mean, the only obvious difference is the change of caddy. It's kind of an amazing thing, like he had great success with Dermot, and then, I, I don't know, these things can grow stale, presumably. You can, absolutely. Dermot's a fabulous caddy, one of the best caddies in the world, and he'll have no trouble getting another job should he want it. Um, and, and it happens, it goes stale. And I think uh, Shane is very much an Irishman. Of all of us, he's probably the most Irish of all of us in terms of he loves home comforts, he loves everything about Ireland. And I think the fact that his family are around him, his brother's caddying for him, I think has had a big effect on him. And, and it's reconnected him with... Uh, with, with when he plays his best golf. And when Shane is happy, um, that's the most important thing for Shane. He doesn't really lose it technically. Um, he just comes in and out of love of the game. And, and when he has that little, little bit of sparkle in his eye, that's when he's at his most dangerous. Mm. Finally then, Rory. So, uh, fifth at the Masters, missed the cut at the US Open, uh, tied for second at the Open, and uh, was well down the field over the weekend. His quotes afterwards pretty interesting, Paul. There's a lot of room for improvement. My swing hasn't been where I want it to be. It was pretty good at the start of the year, but it sort of regressed as the season has went on. Uh, you start to fall back into habits you don't want to. He found three water hazards yesterday. He hit just four fairways in the final round. He was um, 77th driving accuracy, which isn't like him, 45th putting. And still the wedges uh, continue to be a problem. He's talking about taking a couple of weeks off, trying to just put this thing together for Ryder Cup time. It, very difficult for him at the moment. Did you see any real change in his wedge play? I know you, you talked about that on the show a while back, and I know maybe just in an overall kind of picture, you, you, you're talking about that desire, that fight, that uh, Rory maybe needs to get back to the 2014 level. There's, there's something missing still. Whatever the, the missing piece of the jigsaw is, it's, it's hard to tell from this distance. 
Yeah, well, I mean, overall, golf is a simple game in, in very many ways. And, 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 yes, it's important to hit the ball a long way and drive it. But you've got to have the scoring clubs. You've got to be absolutely fantastic with the scoring clubs. Look at Dustin Johnson, how good he is with his wedges. Brooks yeah. Kepka with his putter. I mean, these, Justin Thomas, the same. These guys are fabulous, absolutely fabulous. And Rory's always, he, he's only average. Um, and sometimes the putting is good, like it was in Firestone a few weeks ago, but the wedge play is not great. Then the wedge play is not so bad, and then the putting's off. And those scoring clubs are absolutely paramount for the start. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, and I think we all need to take a step away and, and realize that, that Rory's not, you know, this perception that oh, Rory plays as best he wins, that's not applicable anymore. You know, there's three guys at the moment who you'd have to say are better players than Rory if they're on the game. Brooks Koepka, um, Justin Thomas, and Dustin Johnson. They have that extra gear that Rory used to have. Like we talked about, Ro- like, like uh, Tiger, you know, has to box clever. Rory has to now box clever. He's coming up to 30 years of age. Mm. He's got three guys who hit the ball just as far, just as straight as him, uh, just as got as much um, ability under pressure to perform as Rory ha- has had. Um, and it's a while since Rory's won his last major championship. So now it's about, okay, these guys can now play the game. I used to have, have an advantage over them. Now I don't. Um, so I got a box clever. Um, and by boxing clever is my distance control needs to be as good as theirs. And I need to get into a, a tight situation because I know I can compete against those guys. And, and that's the future for Rory. He doesn't right. have that extra gear where he can just rely on, oh, my talents will get me through in the end because uh, those guys have really stepped up in the last four years. And that more than anything else, um, not alone is it a reason why they're winning and Rory necessarily hasn't, but also psychologically it's having an effect on Rory as well too. You know, he doesn't have that extra extra gear that the others did. So, as I say, this is why I keep saying, you know, there's, the, Rory has to uh, reassess and, and, and about how he's going to approach the game going forward because the, the goalposts have moved. He's mm-hmm. not no longer the, the, the lone talented guy ahead of everybody else. There's now other guys that are up there with him and, and some maybe even ahead of him. That's fascinating. I, I hadn't realised because you still hear, and, and actually I'll let you go now because the, the clock's against us, you still hear the line trotted out that when Rory plays his best, he'll win. It's, it's interesting you feel that that has kind of, we've transitioned slightly out of that now and that must, that must be difficult for him. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. I, I, think, the, I think the evidence suggests it, uh, Joe, and to suggest otherwise is, is not fair or not right. Um, if you want to be cold and analytical about it, these guys can play. Look, look how good Brooks Koepka, look how resilient he was in the US Open, mm. and look how good he was from tee to green um, this week. You know, Rory at his best, could, could he have taken him down? Could he have taken him down? I don't know. We don't know. I think four years ago we would have said yes, mm. or three years ago Rory at his best will win. But um, I, I certainly don't think at the moment that, that Rory can rely on his talent to get him over the line anymore um, because these guys have really stepped up against him. And, and, um, it's, you know, and, and I think that puts a lot of expectation on Rory's shoulder where everybody expects him to win all the time. Um, and, and we don't realize how good the, uh, the competition is out there and how good these guys are and how hungry these guys are. And also what a different stage in their life these guys are. Mm. You know, the guys we talk about mm. um, are not married. Or, you know, they're, they're, they're early in their careers and they've, they're, you know, they, they've got that appetite and that hunger that Rory had four years ago. Now, when that appetite uh, wanes a little bit, that doesn't mean it just shut off and you don't be successful. You know, look how, how long, um, you know, guys like Tom Watson and, and, and Jack Nicklaus kept going. But it's, golf is a very tough game and it wears you down. It wears you down physically, it wears you down mentally, and, and uh, you know, life, life gets in the way, and you've got to have a very, very clear head and uh, a clear desire to play golf for such a sustained period of time. Um, and that's why there's so few who have won, for example, the, uh, the Grand Slam of all four major championships and have a longevity in the game, because it's so difficult. There's always a new kid in the block coming along.